I kind of see two options out, which is either the like an alchemist maybe in the safe lane, just oh. you know, casual, a bit more wave clear, a bit okay. more acid spray, plus some pressure. And then you don't really care about the supports when you get BKB. You quickly go for armor items to deal with the PA, and it just gives you a very quick team timing around Tiny. <laughs> um, other than that, it's Monkey King. So you're okay with the Monkey King? Yeah, I don't mind. mainly because of the Viper ban. I guess okay. the, the telling part there. But yeah, I, is there any four positions that stand out to you guys? If we did the <laughs> safe lane Tiny and then the... Uh, mm. <laughs> I think then if you did that scenario, which also I, I actually like that as well, like a mid wind runner, a, a carry Tiny, it does answer the, the, the threats that you have. And then you'd go for a very active style of four with a bit of pressure, like a Willow or something, just mm. to have chip and poke. It looks like oh. uh, they just go for uh, they went TA. TA. They went Overlay TA. may have broken a little bit. So, so. does carry time oh. with the carry esque mid. <laughs> so I didn't see you there. The name's Catalyst. <laughs> going into uh, in game to watch the rest of the draft. So what, what did we end up going? We saw a TA. Yeah. So TA. they do do the carry tiny with yeah. a <laughs> more like carry esque mid. So four position win ranger mid TA. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I don't mind. I think yeah, that's yeah. it gives them a way to to apply pressure and it's that team timing quick rotation on a TA. Mm. And it's just the question is, can they get that group and huddle? Because now they don't have a scaling win condition it's more of like a 30 minute timing and maybe win strike can play around that with the last pick okay well let's go ahead and jump over to our casters we've got moxie and fog to be able to talk about the game further all right well our earlier series had a lot of surprises but this time around you know it seems like a fairly standard draft coming out from the side of vp and yep. uh win strike you know they're gonna try their best they did pick up a very early brood mother they did, the just begins. just stating exactly how, the type of game that they do want to play. VP, no funny business today, though. I thought maybe we'd see them do some, you know, some type of funner picks, because we have heard them in a couple of their interviews. They try to challenge themselves, but this does not look like they are. This is just a straightforward draft that they've gone for. The carry tiny a few times as they've ran, and they do pick the TA. That one is a little bit new, for sure, but can definitely see the reasoning, but that's why we also see the reasoning for the Rebel Batrider. See how he's able to at least capitalize versus this TA. Off to a quiet start as expected here. Definitely going to be annoying playing against all of that sticky napalm. Yes, a great hero to be able to burn those refractions. In mid-game, easy ways to always catch and kill as well. They've got a lot of good ways to kill that TA, so they did kind of force it, but that is the style that VP wanted to go for. And they also just wanted to have this tiny up here versus the Brood. As we saw, a couple of those bands coming out. They banned out the spend, they banned out the troll on the side of wind strike, so they were putting VP into a tougher position to at least deal with the Brood, but I don't think VP is very fussed about this at all. It's a very standard combo they've ran so many times. Hey, hey, tiny. Good in laning phase, good burst when you do start moving around. And of course, we've seen DM so many times on this axe. He's uh, just taken over so many games too. And you know, they, they did have this flexible kind of style they could do too. I was a bit surprised that they did go for PA on the side of Duraccio because they did see that Wind Ranger, but they knew, you know, save. He absolutely loves Wind Ranger. So they did not really care if it was gonna be in this matchup. I think he might have to, he might have to care a little bit here. It is a very aggressive lane. Axe and Wind Ranger just constantly poking Phantom Assassin, and I'm sure can struggle versus this a bit to push away that aggression. I think it is pretty interesting the fact that Safe has very specific heroes, right? Like yeah. he's he's fairly young, and he's already got these heroes that people you see it get picked up. You're like, that's got to be Safe, you know? I love that's got to be this particular person playing this hero because he's so incredibly good with it. Yeah. I love the confidence that he does have, though. Like, even when we saw, like, the jungle Huskar and stuff like that, that just shows a player has a clear understanding of a game and what he needs to do. So, a yeah, big fan of when I see players do stuff like that. Now, it's not super common that we see this tiny being run in the safe lane in mm -hmm. these particular regions, you know, both Western and European, uh, rather, Eastern European area. How does this differ in terms of, you know, the way that they're going to play this? Because usually, you know, you'll see someone in the mid lane playing the tiny, and then, of course, the Ancient Apparition will join up with them and become the gank squad. Yeah, it's a little bit slower. It's more about your own game rather than securing, uh, like, your carry's farm in particular. So it's going to take him a little bit longer to get the Blink Dagger. But besides that, it's the same build. You're going to get, like, I guess as mid, you go phase boots. But as carry, you're going to go your treads. Then you're just going to go Blink afterwards, likely Echo Saber. Similar kind of style as Courier just walks in and dies to Nightfall. Okay, a bit of a slip up there from Cheshire. And he's going to go Soul Ring. As you do need some type of mana Ooh. item as bottom. We were mentioning yeah. that heavy aggression from these two is always there. And Pentamon can't even connect with the Ink Swell. But yeah, you have to get a type of mana item on these tinies. Since you don't have a bottle, since you're side lane, Soul Ring, it fits absolutely perfectly. It's mid GPK holding his own very nicely here versus the Batrider. Usually these Batriders can take advantage of a TA a lot of the times. Just a pop back, but GPK playing nicely around these stickies. 
I'm gonna back off, go and farm up the small camp. Yep. Classic moves here coming out from a TA. Yeah. It's, it's just even better. I, I'm actually a big fan of TA right now. I think this hero is a different beast, even toward later stages. I used to not really like that hero lake oh, at the bottom. Oh, my goodness. Shouldn't be able to kill him off, but it's this constant harassment. Just having to blow all this region. How much do they actually have left down here? They only have two tangos left on Duraccio, and he's super low. Well, top lane, though. Nightfall's gonna have to throw the avalanche out. He's sitting a little too close for comfort here as the Abbot just continuously running. I'm trying to get the air spike. Not gonna be able to quite connect it, though. It was a valiant effort, but uh, <laughs> we're gonna go grab up this bounty room. Jimmy okay. is running in to contest this. Yeah, he's not afraid. Firefly's down, so he knows he can make those type of aggressive moves. He doesn't have to worry about that quick refraction burning. Top, though, this Brood versus that tiny matchup. You know, that low armor does come into play versus Insatiable Hunger. So we do see Cheshire Cat able to hit him back nicely. Cheshire Cat's been making some nice plays this DPC, and then you say that too, though, but over on the other off lane, DM. Man, he is so good on these playmaking heroes. You know, yes. we've seen him on the center, we've seen him on the Magnus, and uh, especially this Axe, too, so. Yeah, he's Could just bullying. Difficult time here for Draccio. Yep, love the build. One, two. You get the hunger at level two. You only need the one point in spin because it's not that effective. Even though it's like pure damage, you want to just be able to poke from a distance with this battle hunger and just be super annoying. I do like that he's gone for this. This is the poke lane for this sure when you've got a uh, Wind Ranger and an axe for Pantheon. He's doing the best he can. He hasn't, uh, you know, hasn't fallen to any of them just yet as the pressure is definitely on Duracho. It's even it's just for the mini off. Stuff, as we see that with the shackles, just to get in connection with the call. And we see this from Save like every time. He doesn't get power shot at level two ever that I've seen him play the lane. Like almost never. He always gets shackle, always gets his win run to survive as top. Cat. He's got that insatiable hunger. He's going to be able to just life steal back up again, but was looking a little bit scary for a moment. I like that he brought the raindrop up here. Very important always when you're playing versus Tiny. If you just get one shotted, then you can't turn and get your hunger off. So he is always going to be able to turn and get some type of life steal. It's a nice little insurance policy there okay. for him. Nice interruption of the pull from Yamish. We're looking over here in the mid lane. 37 and 4 on GPK yeah. and 27 and 6 currently on Rebel. Of course, you have to keep in mind there is some of those neutral creeps Radiant's coming into play top. here. It's a good it's earth attack. spike though in the top lane. Just going to push them back away from Cheshire Cat. He's uh, trying to get a couple of these little nibbles down here over on Nightfall. Toss back That's though. Like we'll force them away. Oh, I thought that was actually going to proc the Dying cold feed onto him. It was very oh, close. Oh, oh. They're actually glyphing the wave there, so he can't lifesteal off of it. Nice fight. That was probably Kingslayer who popped Smart. that glyph there. It kind of, you know, that's some of those where it's just like, I'm sorry, mid player. You know, I'm, I'm taking your glyph, but it has a s extreme purpose. Like, now he can't actually walk up. He's just going to get comboed if he does. So, securing Tiny several waves there just with the glyph play. Ooh. Inkswell should be able to connect the with shackle. the double shackle. No, oh, they have the power shot. They need just a little bit more damage. They have the battle. Yeah, yeah there it is. Save, getting the first blood on Pantheon. Already a sense of death. Always oh, save, just connecting with some absolutely gorgeous shackles. He's been good at geometry in school. I must have been. Mm. Dyer's Again, another yeah, one. And another shackle connecting. They've got Dyer's the battle Kirk. hunger. Ooh. He's going to try to dodge away here, and he's kiting successfully. Okay, kills the courier, gets rid of the hunger as well, too. Nicely done from Diraccio, even though he's under so much pressure down here, keeping his cool. It's important. Top lane, too, you know. Deshrick has been able to do a lot here. Oh, nice, nice spike here from Yamich Tubble over on the side. King Slayer is trying to run away. He's not going to be able to. So he will fall to the hungry, hungry spider. Not so bad here for wind strikes so far. Mid lane also even. The PA definitely under a lot of pressure though, as we've been seeing. He's at, at they've had to spend a lot of regen down, uh, a lot of money on regen. Does have the ring of health at the very least to counteract it a little bit here. But yeah, it's, it is a very threatening lane with these two. And now it's level six on the axe too with the vanguard. So you can't actually push the axe out of lane whatsoever unless you bring that probably that bat rider down here, which might actually be the first rotation we do see from Rebel. Might want to see him actually make the move down as soon as he has boots to travel, just to alleviate some pressure from the... That literally was going to be my next question, yeah. is he's got his level 6 online, and it feels like this lane has just been so difficult for Duraccio, so... Yeah. I would like to see, you know, some sort of rotation, like you said. Comes at a risk, though, right? You're versus TA, TA immediately is going to see you leave the lane, is going to start pressuring that tower. So it's going to be quick if Rebel does look to make the move, and... You have a rune coming up in about eight seconds, so if he gets a good one. Oh, the shackle, Panthomem. As the Inkswell just will back off. He'll be all right. And the rune 
Ooh, it spawns bottom. And it's a dream one for Perfect. GPK. Illusion doesn't have a bottle. But would have been a good one if he did have it versus that. Bad. But doesn't need it since he can go stick. And he's going to go the Lance build. All right, cool. Not going to go for the Deso. Seeing this a little bit more in, uh, at least in pubs. I know he was considering picking up the bottle early, but like you said, when you've got all that sticky spam coming out. Yeah. Blessings. Double bounty rune, easy peasy. Just walk into the jungle, start hitting these creeps, but uh, we've got the spider army of mass here in the top attack. lane. Cheshire Cat working on pushing it. Rebels got the bots too, so that's that first move. I'd like to see it come down bottom just to help out the Racho a little bit. He's just walking right back to the fountain right now. Yeah. Top lane, toss back here. Get out of here, Cheshire Cat, says Nightfall. But uh, Cheshire Cat still hanging out in the vicinity. He's got the six, so he's got the spike. Oh, the call. Where is it? Does they don't quite have enough damage to get the dunk off. As they do have the rotation now with the Inkswell. They might be able to punish DM for this. Just ticking down and all of this fireflies trying to dance around. He cannot seem to do it. And Duracho, he dies to save us. Oh, my goodness. Oh, he actually gets taken out. So I mean, the rotation's still good from Rebel, but... The Racho does go down, so ends up not being as effective. Jester Cat looking to clean, get the spiders there for Nightfall. We'll be able to clean him up. And he is going to go more aggro build. He's going to go for the Orchid. I've been hoping mm -hmm. to see hoping to see more of this. I do like the Aura Dyer's build, but top. that does mean He's you're not going to scale. Top. As we heard from Ghostick in the interview, too, especially when you go for that, it's all about timing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when you're playing versus VP, timing plays, you have to be so perfect about it. And VP is a scary team, so... We'll see if that one does end up working. So what's the hope is that Cheshire Cat, you know, gets on the back lines and just eradicates the the AA beforehand sort of deal? Yeah, I mean, he's. It just gives you a lot higher kill threshold versus like any hero in particular. Is right. DM. Uh oh, DM. Yeah, Rebel still has lasso. He does indeed. They're just gonna go for a dive here. Stacks a sticky coming up. Gets the oh. call right into two of them. The rest of the team There's though, tackle. they're here. Can they do it? Can they turn it back around? Good earth spike from Yamich buys a little bit more time, but the loser rebel and Cheshire Cat is limping away. Oh, he just barely makes it up. Over on the back line, they go and they clean up Yamich. The last tower hit actually follows Cheshire Cat and takes oh him out. My and God. another, I mean, save. This, these shackles, it sets up Nightfall to get the perfect combo on top two. It's Wind Ranger. Level seven already has a javelin. So now he's kind of like Did this solo Wind Ranger. He can gank the PA by himself now as this wind. He's higher level than the PA. That feels very bad. That's, that's, just, that's just insane, really, from save. Well, he's playing his lane very, very well. He and DM, you know, dynamic duo there. Yep. All right, Rabel. Still has lasso. There's going to be the ice blast, though. Not Connect another shackle. Yeah. Beautiful. GPK gets another kill. And the pressure is on. We talked about VP. This is a team that plays fast. And Duraccio as well. He is left behind. Okay, blinks out. Another chance. Does GPK go for a dive here? All right. No, no. Not the faction. Oh, toss in with the tiny. The hex does come out. The side blades. Oh, Duraccio. Radiant very, very close there. Oh my god, he almost just dies to side blades. And high level Wind Ranger also is quite threatening. PA, this low level, they have Ice Blast, they have a tiny combo. PA is under constant threat here. Anytime they do get any spell connection onto her. BP playing fast, per usual. It's interesting because it feels like the draft coming out from the side of Windstrike is very fast. Like they're trying to out tempo VP, but that's such a huge gamble. This is a team that plays at Mach, you know, I don't know, six or whatever you want to call it at this point. Yeah. They don't give you that breathing room. You really need to just be on top of the lanes constantly and win them very hard if you're going to do this kind of strat. So it feels, you know, very ambitious, but perhaps too much so. Gotta we'll try something. They gotta have to try. They, at least they're trying to make the moves at the important thing. I'm glad they're not like sitting back and farming, but I mean, Save has been there to counteract every single one of the mm -hmm. ganks. And now there's a blink tiny. So these, you know, the, the speed oh. is just gonna keep continuing. And Duraccio, he is so weak. Like they're gonna see him, they're gonna go immediately onto him. And look at this the shackle, the ice blast, and he's just gonna fall to the supports all by themselves. Top lane though, DM. Possibly in a uh, awkward position here, getting a couple nice spins, but it's taking a bath at all this Firefly. Radiant so they should be able to get themselves this kill at the very least for the Saito and Strike, but losing the PA, oof. It's painful. And he already picked up the Blink tag on the X too. So they get the kill, but yeah, they've already got every initiating tool. Blink, Tiny, Blink, TA, Blink, Axe. Everything there for VP to make these aggressive moves. For Windstrike, it's going to be a lot harder how they do approach this. TA is massive right now. And they can just set up for the next tower. So all three tier ones quickly pressured from VP. 
God, that fall is so scary here. And they just find another one. Bottom tower is when you do get a head like this as TA, it becomes very quickly scary too because there's traps all over the place constantly watching the movements out. All right, level 12. Radiance doesn't have the level two traps just yet. Fallen. So we can't place as many, but we will see that very soon. BP, 3K gold lead. PA completely shut down. And the choke begins, honestly, just in, in terms of, you know, choking out the map for the resources. Radiance it's going to be hard. This PA is falling behind. No matter where you go, there is someone with a blink who is going to be on you and immediately, you know, going in for, for initiations or burst damage or just save out of nowhere with a shackle shot. It's yeah. so hard for Windstrike. And they're trying to play up here. But if you notice, they have the vision coming out here from the side of VP because they know they're taking over the area and they're desperate. Yeah, and, D and Diracho doesn't really have a place to farm. His jungle is completely over overtaken from the side of VP. He can't farm Ancients yet. Ooh. Nice silence to stop that nice blast. There's something Spiders. going on in the back end. I can't see. Okay, there it is. The Hex, yeah, they'll get the pick off on DM. They keep getting DM. <laughs> it does feel like they just constantly are grabbing onto this Axe. It does mean save is probably going to get a bit more farm out of it on the map. All yes, part of the plan. <laughs> might just be. We call that yapsering a lane, usually. That's very true. <laughs> but uh, no, VP, they've lost the uh, the axe. He's going to be back up very soon. We get a couple just tips flying out as well. <laughs> having fun. You can tell. It's always VP when they are having this type of style. And I, I know GPK absolutely loves that. I'm so strong, guys. I'm so strong. The Fnatic line. It's, he, he spams it all the times in pubs as well. And as we said, he takes over the whole enemy jungle, not playing on his side so that he can deny the farm, the safe farm away from PA. And as we mentioned, PA, you cannot farm the triangle as effectively just yet. No Battle Fury, even close yet, really. You say safe one farm, but is it really safe farm with the way that DP has just been moving around the map? It's the only little bit that he can find right now. Since the Brood occupies oh, this top cat. side and he's Oh not gosh, the call, the shackle, the ice blast, the and the crumble. Slayer, you have to be careful because these spiders are very hungry. They don't have a mom to take care of them anymore, but the rest of VP will protect him. 44 spiders. spiders. Yeah, the spiders are already going down. Bounty. That's safe lane tiny as we've seen. Very effective. Same thing for Axe. Multiple different forms to be able to deal with that brood. Great ways to get vision as well on these like pesky angles around tree lines, vortex, scanning. power shot, even those traps as we mentioned from earlier. So VP, they've covered their bases versus that early pick brood that we did see come out. I'm trying to just push out the lanes a little bit. Does have the rest of the team behind him. They're trying to set up a trap, perhaps. Safe, revealing himself. DM, though, going in for the call. Bust away, Shackle latching yet again. Safe does have to be careful. Cheshire Cat also very fast. I fall over the follow-up. They've got the side bag left coming in hot, though. They get the lasso, the drag back, and they break that uh, soul bind, but... They get who they came for here. They got Nightfall. Rebel is just going to try to teleport on home. He'll live. The end has to be careful here. There's still plenty of people in the nearby vicinity. They made so, some good moves on one strike, here. but now they're starting to get surrounded. This feels scary here. Broodmother does not have a TP either. Scouted as well. Trap Save. as well. Top. Latch. Got the ink swell. Pots of mem. He's trying to buy a little bit more time as GPK jumping onto the back lines. Immediately, DM trying to find this angle. They drop the trap. They've got the vision. GPK gets himself the kill, and Cheshire Cat's just spinning around in circles saying, Please, God, don't look over here. At least the Brood gets away, though. They only get that Grimstroke. It's bought time for this PA to actually get the Battle Fury. So that ancient stack that has been there for some time will finally be able to get farmed. Diraccio getting some nice space at the very oh, least from all oh, this. Oh, look at them. They're hunting. They're looking. As we said, they covered their bases versus that early Brood. Wrong way they, with that scout. shot save. Oh, they walk over the trap, though. And they find themselves deeply killed, but they do get the nice call, plus the Ice Blast coming in! Connects! Yamage and Cheshire Cat obliterated. How many two-man shackles already have we seen? It's Quite 17. a few, and the calls too have been yeah. on point for these guys. Look at this. Nightfall just strolling on up, rolling on through. They do have the Inkswell, but Kingslayer's here. They pushed him off the big creeps, though. The big ancients are still left, all three of them. DM, he wants to get the jump again. He's not going to be able to quite get that vision, though, that he's looking for. Okay, we'll be able to claim one of the little dragons. And get himself a nice little uh, present out of it, too. Look at that. And Desso is oh done. I believe it's time for that Roche, where I don't think that Winstrike can fight by any means, especially without the lasso being up. Way too difficult for them to approach. The BP, they're going to get this free Roche. Level 15 on TA. Slayer throwing out a nice blast here. Just a TP up, but doesn't connect on Joshua Cap. They should be able to easily take this without any station. 
levels looking like, actually, because GPK, I mean, he's going to be level 16 now at this point. Look at the next highest, 13. Pretty ridiculous. And a double damage. Oh, oh, oh of baby. Of course. And Chester, as we mentioned, there's so many different ways to scout him in tree lines. He has to be very careful how he does step up. Especially Just, with the build he's gone for. He doesn't have these auras to protect himself or his team. So it's it's a full greedy kind of build for Winchurch. Everyone playing for themselves. It does hurt Duraccio a lot. Radiance top tower has fallen. Duraccio at least does have the Battle Fury online, but he's still it's gonna take a while for him to to get anywhere near the level that he needs to be. Look at They're this. Hunting him. Look at they this, they hunt him immediately. Shackle, that one's not gonna connect, but uh, I think that's fine. Ice Blast comes in. It's not even necessary. Save with the power shot. As GPK double damage, just cleaning up the babies. They're so split up still on the side of VP, and Windstrike's not able to punish him. Oh, the call of Overrun to Rable, they have so much damage here. A little bit early on that dunk, but GPK will secure the kill. You gotta get out of there, man. Attack range of plenty here for GPK. Grobo, Dragonlance, and the talent. Beautiful. Then we can hit everybody in distance. Also takes the evasion talent. Most TAs we are seeing getting the Psyonic trap, but mm -hmm. since he's versus PA, he's gone for a, there's a Broodmother who's gone for a physical damage build. Absolutely makes sense for GPK this game to go for this evasion. He just wants all these fighters. He's the carry. They have a carry, they have a safe lane tiny, so he wants to be able to go for this carry build for himself. I think he definitely can. I think he can do he's, pretty much whatever he wants in this game so far. He's level 18. Remember a minute ago or so when we said he was 16? He's just skyrocketing forward. I do like the way he's just parked himself up here in this lane to kind of yeah. deal with some of these spiders, try to alleviate the pressure, and just casually farm up because they have full control of this triangle. Windstrike just, they're, they're getting stuck in their base already. Look at this, they have three heroes in the base. The Duraccio is trying desperately to find anywhere to farm, but he's constantly oh under pressure. VP's covering every lane. DM, he's on the prowl. It's all that dagger. Like even save is already setting up for Ooh, bottom. Duraccio. Walks right into DM. He blinks away. Ice will connect over on save though. Right, right bull trying to get out the last hit though. We'll clean oh, up. Oh, I think that hit Yamato on the way over there too. Look at these side blades. What is this nonsense? Duraccio. Oh my goodness. He blinks to DM. DM says it's great to see you again, buddy. Doesn't quite get dunk, but Nightfall's just rolling on into the base. Got the battle hunger. Looks like Bill. They'll behave, they'll back off, they'll respect it, but they're not gonna go for a full-on dive just yet. My, yeah, I, this is what I mean, this this new this new TA, like this this talent is just Radiant's enabling the hero so much. Level 19, 20 minutes, the range that he can actually connect with these Radiant's blades is ridiculous. He almost actually got that Grimstroke in the base with that last one on the range creep. And the next pickup, he's got BKB, so he's covered defensively. This, ag this shard is one of the more powerful ones. He's gonna get it very early on in 20 minutes, so the silence it can provide, 3.5 seconds, and you get more traps. So it's beautiful, and for map control, and playing versus Brood, the vision it provides inside tree lines is phenomenal. How BP. do you kill GPK? He has not died at all. They have to use everything. They haven't even gotten a chance to use Finger on the side of Windstrike. The speed that VP is playing at right now, it's it's too much. Windstrike doesn't know what to do. It's all three lanes. Look at the ward coverage from VP too. It's they just got full info sweeping from lane to lane every single time they do see poor Duraccio trying to find some space. They know it's all about the PA. The only way that Windstrike has any hope is if PA gets farmed and she can't find anything. They're effectively just starving them out here. Yep. Hells. Through pure aggression. I mean, this, the levels that are coming. Uh, this is I'm insane from GPK. Max likes this very much. They got the blink. So let's see if we can see a successful finger. Is able gonna be able to get anybody? But this is, they still take the ages, so it's it's tough. They still can't go for GPK. And look at this DM because they know they have not been able to find anyone over in the radiant woods. DM. Silence. Hex. Okay, they might be able to blow him up, but immediately here comes GPK. Axe eventually falling. And they do manage to go and try to put some damage over here onto GPK. He is silenced up. They're holding onto the BKB already being popped though. So that is gonna be the Aegis. They end up losing Cheshire Cat on the back line. Optimum here. He drops that ultimate because he's trying to do anything that they can. Get off those spells before he dies. Spider Baby's just cleaned up and Yamage here. Oh dear. You are not making it out of here. Nightfall gets himself a triple kill. DM's just a sacrifice. He does not care about his life. He walks in, he's like, please use spells on me. They do. They reveal their positioning. They run in. GPK, he holds the BKB so patiently. Doesn't even use it at all inside the fight. Rebel, he tried to hold his lasso. That's the important thing. He's like waiting. He's like, all right, we're going to kill TA, and then I'm going to lasso him on the respawn. On the second one, yeah. But he can't because nope. there's just too much of VP, too much power already coming in. 
Dyer's top tower. EP's just masterclassing this one, sacrificing their axe to, set, to successfully set themselves up for just a dominating game. BKB finished up on Tiny as well. And will also be going for that shard to make himself a physical damage carry on top. But look at Tiracha, he's so scared this Can't whole game. Run. He cannot go anywhere without there just being a DM or somebody. Yeah. Look, DM, he's he's, yeah. he's baiting them. He literally is just hey like, guys. please use your spells on me. And they have to commit the finger to kill him and like almost everything. Double BKB, as you mentioned as well, to go for him. And yeah, they can barely bring down GPK the once. Look at poor Pantomim on the back line. He's like, I gotta get some spells off. I gotta do something. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like the only information they had on the map too. The only ward that they could get out and the only way, only place they could play is the most unsafe place, which is that enemy jungle. Because it just constantly oh, here. Play. Every single time, VP owns their side of the map. Level 21 TA, 24 minutes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. It's very, very difficult for win strike here. They're trying. But there is no breathing room. Now he's got Mel Dispel as well versus the Bat Rider versus. Radiance all right. So all these things is going to be very effective. You can't approach this tower. Look at this. You can see that so Wind Strike. They're just trying to get back into the woods over here, just trying to, to farm the dire jungle. They know that they're not going to run into VP here at this time. VP at any moment, of course, could just turn around and decide, ah, yeah, let's go on to. Yeah, they can just turn for the fight at any moment. PA is. PA can't show up the fights. Garaccio just can't find anything on the map. Level 14. Safe lane tiny 18. As we said, TA 21 slash 22 soon. This is too fast. The place for VP, it's just has been bloodthirsty. Killed. They're constantly oh. struggling together looking for somebody. They got Cheshire Cat's courier. His shard was on that. Oof. That hurts a lot. It does. And a uh, hidden thing that Cap did tell us is that Shard also reduces cooldown on webs by 15 seconds. Does not say it on the say tip. It anywhere. But it does do that. Yeah, I think he was watching, uh, was it the Chinese region when they were playing yeah. it and he realized it? Yeah. It moves it from 40 to 25 high. second replenish time on those webs, which is very important for Broodmothers. So it's very surprising it doesn't show that on the Shard. Is that intended or do you think something went wrong with the code? I. It, it happened. I mean, it's intended, I'd imagine. <laughs> feature. It doesn't say it. So. Bonus feature. For those brave enough to play Broodmother. Broodmother. Yeah. A little a little treat for you. Yeah. 14,000 gold lead. Just under no ways for Windstrike to really get out on the map at all. These traps, there's that plethora of items on GPK, Batrider. Can't find any opportunity for lassos at all. Look at the vision. Look yeah. at all of these traps. Oh my god. That's the power of the shard on top of just Dyer's having a, such an early level 18 slash, denied. yeah, etc. So, yeah, they can't get out. Look what Duraccio's farming. He's the one getting Ooh. something. Cheshire Cat has to just play tree lines, but the rest of the team stuck in the base. There's a double damage down there. Don't From mind the if I DPK. do. Yep. Double damage. Getting very close to finishing up that Daedalus, too. Casual. Damage is going to be insane. Casual 500 plus damage right now with that DD when Refraction's popped. Rush up. is up, yes. Yep. It's time. Time to go back in that pit, and I don't think they can do anything about this on the side of one strike. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. If VP even wants to go for it, VP might just be like, let's just slaughter them. You know, they just showed They have them. a double damage on GPK. They yeah. can do whatever they like, honestly. Absolutely. Plus the BKB, everything here. It's a scary, scary season here. Mm -hmm. Strike. And it's a jam as well on the axe, so the limited vision that we do see out on the map from Windstrike is going to get taken out if VP even ever swings back over there. And this Roche will die in a matter of seconds. Got your cat sitting up over on this eye spot, but uh, no. send some babies. Sacrifices. A couple of his children. Yep. Smoke play. They're going to try to challenge us. They can't get over there fast enough. No, there's no way. Scooters looking around here on the pit. Look at this. Okay, we do get uh, the call from DM just cleaning up the babies, destroying like how, the army. How dare you touch my AA? <laughs> As that is the some of the fastest item timings I've ever seen on a TA. It's 20,000 net worth at 27 minutes. That is. All right, all right. They've got the jump, but they've got the BKB here. All right, finger does go up. They'll be able to take down King's Lair, but Rebel, oh, he gets dunked. It's not going to be allowed to be a part of this fight. Yamage will pay for that finger. So he will fall next. Pantomim here should be able. No, they have the toss. And there's a tiny silence. He does not care about your silence. As they follow up with the call, the shackle, the damage.
damage and down go Taracha. I believe it is time to call it. It is impossible. Chester Cat just has to watch from the trees the entire fight. Cannot even get involved as this brood mother. Look at Chester Cat. He just can't do anything. Just, if he walks it feels in, feels like dead. panic. Like mob, like, oh, what do I do? You know? Can't. That's why we do see the aura built. Auras a lot of the time because in these type of some of these games it just gets out of control where you're just gonna walk in and die as MVP. Continuing to do what they do best and just dominate Radiance this region. The game's not over yet, but it certainly feels very difficult for one strike. Tower going down. They can't do anything to TA. He could one shot most of these heroes with the crit. Oh, for sure. For sure. They do have a tier two up in the top lane. So it looks like BP, you know, they want all the towers. BPK is just going to clean up these creeps. I'm very surprised when Strike's sticking in this one, I got to be honest. This PA, there's no space for her to farm, even to catch back up, but there's, there's just nothing they can really do on this. Oh, look at this one ranger. Something. Yeah, he finds him. He finds him. And the itsy bitsy spider will uh, fall here. I, I don't know, this fanatic line is, I love it. Like, I'm so strong, guys, I'm so strong. It, it cracks me up. So G GPK loves it, and yeah, VP. Another incredible performance from them, just giving no hope, really, to win strike. When they tried to make the moves on the map early, they did. They did try to yeah. make these early aggressive moves, but every time, like, save was just there. Really, in the beginning of the game, it's been this win ranger just always reading the movements before they happen. Duracho has to be so careful here. He's very far forward here with Pantomum. They're just lined up like a little ducklings. If Nightfall decide to do an Avatoss, if they had any sort of inkling that they're over there. They're going to try for one more fight. Smoke be Oh, the power shot. They see them. The Avalanche, the Hex, but GPK immediately blows up Yamage. BKB is the last of red, though, as they try to pull them out. Can they do it? The cheese gets munched up, and they'll take down the Duracho. They will fall. Pantomum and Strike teleport out here. He's not going to be allowed to leave unless it's in a body bag. They call. And the G's get dropped. They got the double last though, but it's, it's irrecoverable at this point. VP stopping, really just beautiful plays all around. Save with some unbelievable shackles, shackles early on.